Hello, and welcome to the NJDEP's e-permitting application tutorial video. In this video, we will walk through all the basic steps required to successfully complete a new stormwater construction request for authorization, or RFA. Let's get started. Let us first take a look at your My Workspace page. This is your homepage within the e-permitting system. From this page, you can start new RFAs, access in progress RFAs, check on the submittal status of completed RFAs, and access all your approved authorizations. The page is broken down into four main sections, service selection, my facilities, my services in progress, and my services submitted. As this is your first RFA, there is no information under these sections, but I will explain more about them later on in the process. For now, let's begin your new RFA. To do this, you simply click on the hot link for Stormwater Construction General Authorization. You are first presented with a list of all the required information in order to complete this application. Read through these 11 items and verify you have all the information on hand. Once you have done this, simply click on the continue button to proceed. You now must enter your submission slash project name for the project you are requesting this RFA for. This name should be the same as on your soil erosion and sediment control plan application. The comments box is not a required field and is present for clarification purposes only. Once this is completed, Click on the Continue button to proceed. Next is the Site Information screen. Here you will enter all the locational information for the site. Note that the site coordinates are in New Jersey State Plain, not Latin Long. To help obtain this information, we have provided a link to our NJ GeoWeb. For information on using this service, please review the NJ GeoWeb for e-permitting tutorial video. Once all your information has been entered, click the Continue button to proceed. Next is the Contact Information screen. The RFA requires three contact types a fees and billing contact, an owner, and a permittee. Once filled out, each contact can be saved for later use by selecting the Save to My Favorites Contacts checkbox and clicking the Save button at the bottom of the screen. To access your saved contacts as well as your own user contact information, click on the Insert from Existing Contacts drop-down. Then, simply click on the desired contact name. Once the fees and billing contact information is entered, you can either click on the Owner tab at the top of the screen or the Next button at the bottom of the screen to proceed to the next contact type. Once you have filled out the Owner and Permittee information, click on the Continue button to proceed. Next is the applicability questionnaire screen. These questions determine whether or not this RFA is appropriate for your particular project. Note that question 3 refers to all stormwater discharges from the site. 
Also, discharges to groundwater occur rarely and are generally done through designed structures, so take care when answering this question. Once you have completed the questionnaire, click the Continue button to proceed. The next screen is the SCD Certified Plan screen. Here is where you will enter the codes provided to you by the Soil Conservation District Office upon approving your soil erosion and sediment control plan. The first code is the randomly generated code called the SCD Certification Code. The second code is the file code associated with your soil erosion and sediment control plan called the 251 identification code. Note that these codes are case sensitive. Once you have entered them correctly, click on the continue button to proceed. Next is the Terms and Conditions screen. Here is where you will review the Stormwater Construction General Permit. To access the permit document, click on the PDF document icon on the right hand side of the screen. Take time to read and review the permit. Then, print a copy of the permit to have on hand. Once you have reviewed the permit, click on the checkbox, then click on the Yes button to proceed. Next is the Application Specific Information screen. Here you will re enter all the required information along with some descriptive language about your particular project. Once complete, click on the Continue button to proceed. Next is the Certification screen. Please note for purposes of compliance with NJAC 7-14A-4.9, an electronic request for authorization may be signed by a consultant provided that the consultant has a written and signed agreement with the permittee slash owner of the facility outlining the consultant's designated responsibilities. The agreement shall be maintained by the consultant for submission to the department upon request. This is the point at which you, the user, can review all the information you have entered. By clicking on the paper icon under the view on the right hand side of the screen, you will be presented with all your application information. and answers you have given earlier in the process. Please review this information and verify that it is all correct. Click on the return button. Now you must certify the RFA. Please review the certification language on this screen. In order to certify, you must enter your certification PIN which you received during the registration process. If you have forgotten or misplaced your PIN, simply click on the Forgot Certification PIN button and a new PIN will be emailed to the email address provided during the registration process. Once you have entered a valid PIN, click on the Certify button to proceed. Next is the Payment Summary screen. This screen details the payment requirements for the RFA. The user is provided with two payment options, pay via credit card or pay via e-check. 
For this tutorial, we will select Pay via Credit Card. Once selected, you must enter the required information. Then, click on the Continue button to proceed. Next, a review screen is provided showing both the payment requirements and payment information. Once satisfied, click on the Authorize Payment button to proceed. Once the payment is verified, you will be directed to the Payment Confirmation screen. Here, you can select a printer-friendly version of this screen and print a copy for your records. Once done, click on the Continue button to proceed. Finally, you are presented with your temporary authorization. Please note that this authorization is sufficient to begin your construction activity. The authorization is only temporary until the information can be loaded into the NJDEP database. Because of this, the temporary authorization does not display the PIID number and the NJPTS number. These will be present on your final authorization. Click on the Printer Friendly Version link and print out a copy of this document for your records. Once completed, click on the Return to Workspace button to complete the RFA process. Once back at your My Workspace page, Scroll down to your Services Submitted section. Find the RFA you've just completed. Note the status. You may access the summary of the RFA information by clicking on the icon under the View title. Over the next day or two, your RFA information will be put into the NJDEP database. Once this is completed, an email will be sent to you notifying you that your final authorization is ready. This email should also include a PDF document containing your final authorization. To access the final authorization through the system, Log back in and go to your Services Submitted section. Find the RFA. Note the status has changed, and a PDF document icon is now present. Click on this icon. Here is your final authorization. Note the PIID number and the GYPTES number are now present, along with a verification of your online payment. The authorization also displays who certified the RFA, the date authorized, and the Soil Conservation District Office. This completes this tutorial. For more information regarding this process or other aspects of the Stormwater Construction General Permit, please contact Daniel Cuddy, Senior Environmental Specialist at 609-633-7021 or by email at daniel.cuddy at dep.state.nj.us.